Last time we had quite the mess implementing the movement here, which was a little bit of a pain, but now everything works perfectly fine and is very easily editable. Today we're going to go over something a little bit more basic, something simpler, but something that I do want to uh, point out and make a specific video on, and that is something C++ related. So let's open up one of our classes. For instance, our weapon. If we want a reference to our player on this weapon, how are we going to do that? We can do this through a variety of different ways. The way we're going to go about doing it right now, possibly, maybe, not the most efficient way of doing things, but it does show off what I want to show off here. So, let's make a uh, protected variable here, and um, that will be a variable of type a actor. Actually, let's make it uh, a character, and it will be a pointer, and it will point to the player. Now, this will work fine, but how do we get a character pointer to give this thing a value, right? And we'll do that in our begin place. So if we open that up real quick, uh, we can do this a number of different ways. Also, we no longer need this function because that was just for an example. And there's a bunch of different ways of doing that. But today what we're going to do is we're going to use the get player character function. So we get our player and that's equal to how do we do this there is a library called gameplay statics which is a bunch of static functions that you can just call which are useful for well gameplay purposes like getting a player character reference and the way you can get those is by using a include at the top of our file here so if we do a hashtag include we then get all of the potential header files that we can include. Because, as you might have noted in experimenting or whatever, not every file here has access to every little bit of information in every other file. If I want to go into my base weapon, for instance, is where we're working right now, just by chance, and I want to get a variable from our uh, base magic character like I want to get a reference to the camera boom for whatever reason. I can't do that in my base weapon because my base weapon doesn't know anything about my base magic character. The way to give it that information so that it can use that information is to include the header file. And what this include practically means is it just says, okay, when you're compiling, just take everything that is in the header file that we're including here and just copy paste it on top. Just act as if all that information exists in this file as well. So that way, we now have access to that information. And that also goes for a bunch of the components that Unreal itself makes. It doesn't include those in all the files you make, because most files aren't going to need most components. So they don't need to know what those components are and what they can do. But then when you add them in yourself, you need to tell your code, hey, you now have access to the information about this new class. Like the auto-generated character that the template came with, that has a include to the game framework player controller, so that it can use the information in the player controller class. It has a include for the character movement component. It has a include for the capsule component, for a decal component, and so on and so forth. So what we're going to be adding here today is going to be in the Kismet library, and it's called Gameplay Statics. Now that we have included this, I can call you Gameplay Statics, double colon, because we're taking something out of a static class. We've got over this before, I do believe. And then I can get player controller or character. We're gonna get the character right now. And that requires us to put in a world context object. That's just putting in any object really or anything that is a u object but pretty much anything is a u object if it's unreal specific and that's just going to look at hey what world do i exist in generally speaking you probably only have one world but if you have more it needs to know what world you have so you can just pass in this you just want to get the world that this object is inside and then you want a player index now this gets a little bit tricky for single player games this is just always going to be zero, which is always going to be player zero. If you have a multiplayer game, uh, if you just pass in zero here, it's always going to get you player one. That's not ideal if you want to get a reference to player five. 
at that point you would need to pass in six so you need to make a variable to do something like that and things get a little bit more complicated but we're just focusing on single player games here so this is the way you get a reference to a character pointer here just you gameplay statics player character this zero and now when we start a game our weapon will now have an easy way to reference the player that it is on and you will see if i remove this include by the way and i wait a second here uh vs code is going to scream at me because it suddenly doesn't know what gameplay statics is anymore because it doesn't have that include file either way this is a really really bad way of doing things because of what i explained before get player character uh you need to pass in an index and if you don't know what that index is yet uh you can't pass it in and you wouldn't know at this point so if you planning to make this a multiplayer game or want to have the option open to you in the future to add multiplayer compatibility uh, you're going to need to go through a lot of code and get rid of all this stupid shit so we're going to actually remove that and show you the better way of doing things which also will mean that we need to use an include file somewhere else so in our base weapon uh, what we'll do is we have a character player and then we'll also make a uh, void function here uh, set player pointer something like that which will take in and this is gonna fucking blow your mind is going to be a character pointer wait for it pointer we're going to point to a pointer and that is a little weird uh but <laughs> stick with me here you'll see why in a second um and we'll call this player pointer let's make the definition uh, for that and there we can just say our player is equal to uh, the dereferenced i don't know why this suddenly just got converted to player uh the dereferenced player pointer so we have a pointer to a pointer when we dereference that that just becomes that original pointer again if you don't know what i'm talking about go back watch the videos about pointers with this context you can point to pointers which is a little mind-blowing at first and generally speaking it's something that you don't want to do because otherwise if you have a function that then points to this you're going to end up with a point 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 point, and so on and so forth uh but for right now uh this will work just fine so this way we can set this player pointer through a function on this thing and then when we go into our base magic character here uh we want to go into our begin play and here we have our weapon somewhere uh i don't recall exactly what we call that variable so let's look through here somewhere around here that should be child actor component weapon that makes sense i actually named things the way they should be named uh that weapon we need to get a pointer to specifically what type of actor it is and here we also get into something else that i i'm going to cover in this video and that is casting if you have seen my blueprint tutorials or if you've experienced this kind of stuff before this should be pretty self-explanatory but i'm going to go over it pretty quickly anyway so we have our weapon and that weapon has a function on it called get child actor so we have our child actor component which is a component and that component has a pointer to the actual actor that it spawns in but there's a a little bit of an issue with that and that is that this is a pointer to just a regular old actor this could be literally anything this is just an actor so when we make a variable out of this we can only make an actor variable out of this right uh let's say we want to make a character out of that uh it's going to uh scream at us because you can't just say hey this character called uh let's say character without spelling it out fully you can't just say hey this character is going to be this actor because they're not the same type an actor isn't a character a character is a child of an actor but you can't directly put these into each other because that's just not how that works so what you need to do instead is you need to get this actor and cast it into a character and all that that means is that it's going to try to put the actor into whatever class you're casting to and if that succeeds so if the pointer to this actor points to an actor that happens to be a character that cast will succeed and it will create a variable that points specifically to a character and now suddenly you will be able to put that into this so the way you do that is you type cast then these pointy brackets and then you type in what type you want to cast to which will be uh, a character and then you put in a pointer to whatever 
you want the variable that is going to get cast, in this case, that will be the child actor, to be. And now you see it stops screaming at us because it's no longer trying to make an actor directly into a character. What it's doing is it's trying to cast that into a character and then set that to whatever this variable ends up being. Do be aware, if this fails, this will become a null pointer. And when you try to use it, it will crash your game and your engine. So whenever you want to use this, it is advised to put in an if statement and simply just if and then the variable name will check whether or not this is a null pointer. If this is a null pointer, whatever is in these brackets now will not run. Well, that was a whole tangent uh, explaining casting because we're going to need to cast to the base weapon. So instead of a character, what we'll do is uh, we'll cast to a base weapon and we'll call that weapon pointer and we will cast to a base weapon. But it's going to scream at us because a base weapon is not an identified type here because this file doesn't have access to whatever is in our base weapon class. This header file here defines what a base weapon is, but this CPP file doesn't know that this header file here exists. We need to tell it that it exists and where it exists. That's what we do with includes. So we can hashtag include just simply base weapon. And now it will include that header file and it will stop screaming at us about our new variable here because now it knows, oh, wait a second, base weapon, that is th that is that file. That, that is that header file. I know what that is. I can use the information out of that. So now we can say if that weapon pointer is valid. So if that is not a null pointer, what we want to do is we want to say uh, weapon pointer and we want to set player pointer and the player pointer that we're going to give it is going to be uh, just this. Oh, and actually, uh, what we did before here, uh, it's still good to have that explained, uh, but we don't actually need that to be a pointer pointer in this case, because um, we don't need to like change anything about this. So what we can just do is we can say we have a character pointer here, and this will already uh, pass through a pointer. So... We don't need that to be a pointer pointer. My apologies for that. I'm going to leave it in though because knowing that that is a thing uh, is valuable information. Now, it's also uh, screaming at us because uh, this function, I apparently made this in the private section. I made it in the protected section. That makes sense. Uh, you do need to put this in the public section if you want to access it from a different class. So even though we have it included, in here that only means that this file now knows of the existence of base weapon it doesn't mean that i can access things that aren't public about it i still need these functions to live in the public section in order to actually access them from a different class which brings us to the final thing that i want to talk about i know that this video is a little all over the place talking about a bunch of different little things but i don't want to make a bunch of two minute videos about this so we have the a base weapon we can make in our base magic character now because we have that include. But what if we go into the header file of base magic? If we want to make one of those variables in here, let's say in the protected section, I want to make a base weapon pointer and call that a weapon pointer two, something like that. It doesn't matter because we're not actually going to use this. Um, this is going to also scream at me because even though this CPP file might have the include to base weapon this header file does not and as such it's going to throw an error so you might think okay let's just copy over this include that we have over here and put that all the way up here as well and that should fix it and you are partially right that will fix it but you shouldn't do that because these header files are generally the thing that are the heaviest to run and these are the things that are also going to take up the lion's share of the memory of what an object is going to weigh, in a sense. So just slapping on a bunch of different header files onto your header file is generally not a great idea, especially since you don't actually need any of the information that is in the other header file for just declaring this variable. If you just want to let the engine, or rather the compiler, know that, hey, this class exists. You don't need to know what's in it. You don't need to know how to use it because only the CPP file needs to know how to use it. The header file only needs to know that it exists. You can do what they do up here and simply type the word class in front of it. 
And that just tells the compiler, hey, this variable type, you might not have any idea what's going on with it within the context of this file. Just know it's a class. That way the compiler knows what it needs to know for this file. It can compile, it won't throw any errors. And then in the actual implementation in the CPP file, that is where you put the include because there we actually need to get stuff out of that class. We don't need to do that in our .h file. So that's a little bit of everything. We talked mostly about include files. We talked a little bit about casting. We talked a little, tiny little bit about pointer pointer, just because I need a place to mention it. And this video is just kind of a wishy-washy thing of things you should probably know before going forward. So next time, now that we have all of this stuff out of the way, I think it would be a good idea to start working on the bullets that we're going to be spawning for our twin stick shooter. And maybe, depending on how long it takes us to set all that up, also start spawning them in through our player character. And a very big thank you to all of my patrons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thanks to my cave digger tier patrons, Sergey Thomas and Eleanor.